Hey guys, my name is Stan, and we are now in Honda dealership, and our friend was kind enough to invite us here and allow us to actually film inside, which is great. So let's go, and uh, we're going to start our review of the gear. Let's start with helmets. So, your helmet choices are plentiful. Well, number one, I guess we're going to start with a full face helmet. Let's get this beautiful showy RF 1100. Costs a lot of money. Oh, no, don't want to drop it. <laughs> um, essentially, all you get with this helmet, aside from all the accessories, the intake vents and exhaust vents and decent ventilation, is that opening. You can open that, and uh, essentially, the visor is the only the only thing you can really move on the helmet. Essentially, it just goes over your head, but this is the best protection you can get. And if you want to ask my opinion, I'd recommend it for any bike, but it's definitely a must for any sport bike you, you can ride, even a standard bike. So, moving on. Second type of helmet. Uh, let's, let's find going. I think, yeah, there are bells right here. So, Revolver Center. Evo. Just pull the strap on like that? Yeah. yeah. So this is a modular helmet. So it's essentially when you pull this up, it becomes like a three-quarter, am I right? Yeah. So a three-quarter helmet covers everything but your face. So if you decide to face plant, probably not the best idea to have this up. Um, manufacturers tell us that, you know, pretty decent production once it's in this position, but uh, like I said, I'd still recommend a full face if Unless you really want a cup of coffee while you're riding, you know, point to point at a gas station. You really want to pull this up and just have a cup of coffee and you know, smoke a cigarette, which you shouldn't be doing. There's also a drop-down visor on that one, oh, which cool. most of them, it's on the left-hand side of the helmet. Like here? Oh, yeah. The other side. Left-hand side of the helmet. Underneath at the bottom. Is it? Is right here, on the chin. Oh, yeah, I see it. Okay. So if you push that down. See how... Uh, most of them have a now. I'm not very useful. Most of the flip-ups do have them now. <laughs> So yeah, that's actually this is pretty cool. But uh, I know that some full face also have the drop down visor, right? Few of them, yeah. Few like the Scorpion 1000 yeah. and 1100 yeah. or whatever. The 1100 yeah. and the 500. And does it work when you GT Air has it as well? Does it work if I close it? Yeah. Okay, so it kind of stays there. Yeah. This is actually pretty cool. You don't need to change your visor. I ended up changing mine to dark smoke okay. just because I didn't have this piece over here. So. Awesome, so this is your second type of helmet. I'd still say it's an acceptable choice for me. Yeah. I'd, I'd probably end up wearing something like this if I had a like an adventure bike, which I don't, so moving on. Our next type of helmet is essentially... Look at this one. Same thing we just looked at, except it doesn't have the full face enclosure. So imagine the same thing we just looked at, except without the full face. So you need three, three quarter helmet, Again, with a pull-down visor, which I have no idea how to pull back up. It's Push okay. it up. You know <laughs> twist it up. Oh, yeah. okay. Pull it. pull it down like that, twist it up. Very new things. And you can pull down the the uh, main visor, I guess, but you can still probably have the decent airflow right here yep. blown into your face. So this is for those people who are not afraid to face plant. Um, <laughs> hopefully this never happened to any one of you watching. So. Um, what would you say, what would you recommend this helmet for? Like, what sort of purpose? Cruisers, um, mostly for cruisers I'd recommend. Perfect. With, so, when you've got a windshield and there's not too much wind, mm -hmm. it's nice to get a little breeze underneath. Awesome. I think you're right. And uh, this has a fairly decent protection from all the bugs flying in your face. Yeah. So this is still a decent choice. Now, I think the last type of helmet is something like this. That'll be the white one. Just for kicks. So, this is a... Half helmet, right? Skull cap. <laughs> uh, well, it's still DOT approved. So you Any can, helmet will be decent. There you go. So you can still wear it as a helmet. You can still call it a helmet. But um, one thing I'd be concerned with is view protection. There's no side or front um, protection. Yeah. I mean, essentially, aside from your head being not protected, your ears are yeah. not protected at all. So on highway, highway speeds, my personal experience, at highway speeds, you either need earplugs all the time or basically screwed. Even in my full face helmet I sometimes struggle with uh, just wind noise. It's just very windy. A full face helmet actually might create more wind noise Oh, because there's more fiberglass or material that's redirecting the wind. I see. Whereas this will be as if 
and you stick your head out the window. It's still fairly loud, but it's a different kind of noise. noise. So this is a different sensation. Well, still, you would want, would you it's recommend your plugs for this? Um, it depends. Oh, You'll I probably see. get used to it. Interesting. Most people would wear that are mostly on cruisers, and um, typically they'll have a windshield, which yeah. quiets everything down too. Cool, but there's no chin protection no. or anything like there's that. There's nothing there's except unless you land on the top of your head. Okay. Which is <laughs> so it's a stylistic choice. Through my crashes, I haven't done that yet, so yeah. I've been through a few. Oh my god. So yeah, we have an experienced rider here holding the camera. Thank you. And uh, I wouldn't recommend this helmet unless this is your stylistic choice. And maybe you're riding a cruiser at a decent, yeah. not too fast sort of pace, right? You're riding from point to yeah. point and you're just enjoying some of you know, nice outdoors. All right, let's move on. Next thing, uh, we're gonna look at yeah, jackets. Let's look at okay. jackets. All right, so in terms of jackets, there are plenty of stuff to choose from, but uh, when I started riding, I, I first thing I did actually, I bought myself a nice leather jacket, similar to the icon here. Uh, mine is a different brand. It doesn't really matter. The old uh, offer a decent amount of protection. Uh, just watch for armor inserts. Make sure they're C or other otherwise certified and they're pretty sturdy. And I guess most important thing is check out for perforation. If you live in hot climates, like if you live in California, you definitely want a perforated yeah. jacket. Here in Canada, I actually enjoy having a non-perforated jacket. I can wear it all the way through fall, like all the way to November, yeah. even sometimes when it's like three to six degrees in the yeah. morning. I just rode when it was three outside. It was, it was fine, actually. So inside you get your regular stuff. Well, I guess you can show you with the, I'm not going to put too much in detail. There's a liner. Here you got your uh, back protection backpack uh, pad, which is pretty standard, I guess. You, you could upgrade them on most of these jackets. And you have your armor in your uh, arms, in your, in your shoulders, essentially and that gives you a decent amount of protection. Now, if you don't have the money, or you're not sure yet if you're gonna be a motorcycle rider all your life, and all you wanna do is just to go for you know, safety course, and, you know, check it out, and you don't wanna spend too much money, like I said. These guys go for a lot less, and these are the same thing, essentially, but they're made of mesh, and this material, it doesn't, uh, stands up to abrasion, I guess, fairly. Not as much, that's textile? Mm -hmm. The mesh is just to the left. Is this so, the no, the one over here. Oh, these I guys see. are. I don't even know the difference. Maybe you can. Okay. Point so to that. textile is more for all weather. Yeah. Typically, they'll have liners. Most leathers do nowadays. Some don't. Mm -hmm. More perforated ones are designed more for summer. They will not have a liner. So if I if I were to slide in this, what would happen? It all it depends on any crash. I mean, I've taken many spills. Some of the worst accidents I've taken have pretty much had just a little scuff. Some of the lightest crashes I've had, I've had to buy a new jacket or pant or boot. I see. So it's, it really comes down to how you crash and how long and how angles, everything. Mm -hmm. It's so, more physics than... So these guys, they have Kevlar or some other materials? No, that's just the mesh. Oh, okay. Yeah, sometimes they'll have textile elbows or shoulders, but um, for the yeah. textile mainly it's more for all weather, so you can go colder. Uh, they're going to be more waterproof than leather and mesh. Right. Um, unless the mesh jacket has a liner on the inside. Mm -hmm. um, it's more for all weather, wind protection, which you can ride into colder weather. Cool. It breathes better than a solid leather. It's, all of these still have the inserts. Like yeah. the armor is still in them everywhere where it should be, and in the back as well. So you, if you were to upgrade this stuff, you still be okay, I guess, as long as you don't actually land in this area because there's no protection. In most jackets, I find that there's no protection for your chest. Nowadays, um, Alpine starts beginning to put more chest protection. That's cool. And as well as Dainese, you can get inserts. A lot of times you can get inserts or vests. Right. But Dainese, I know, has pockets for them. And um, A-Star is beginning to put them actually into the jackets from factory now. Awesome. Let's take a look here. I, I notice you have uh, some more stuff over here. I'm not sure. Okay, yeah, so this just looks cool, right? <laughs> this is uh, something I'd wear on the cold fall day, you know, to protect myself while walking. <laughs> uh, even though it looks like it has any, any kind of protection here, I, uh, I think it's a stylistic sort of thing you'd put over something like this, actually. If you look down right here, right? 
if you have your armor, which covers your back, covers all the areas the normal jacket would cover, and your chest, I would say this would protect you probably even more than your average textile jacket, and maybe sometimes more than your leather jacket. Depends on, I guess, depends on what happens. Yeah. Really key, depends on what happens. Key thing to keep in mind with armor like this yeah. is you get impact protection but not abrasion resistance. So if you, so on if a vest you like start this, sliding exactly. here in this area, you're screwed. If you rip the actual material itself, the mesh um, netting almost, yeah. you lose the armor altogether. Yeah. So that's the only difference between a jacket and more of a vest style uh, protection. So riding and on a hot summer day, I see a lot of guys actually riding this on the Alone, some people will ride with t-shirts alone. <laughs> yeah, yeah, so riding just in these uh, doesn't ri really give you enough protection to, you know, keep your arms There's after you crash. There's also you armor like this where it's shorts, it's almost like boxers you wear mm -hmm. underneath your pants. That's cool. And then you've got the armor on the hips, which is a very smart place to put protection. Yeah, because you actually slide on your butt a lot of times. Yeah. Yeah. That's actually very smart. I wouldn't even think of putting protection down there because uh, no, no one really thinks does. about yeah, it. Yeah, no one thinks about it. One area I'd always protect uh, would be my knees. And I, I don't even ever think about leaving home We've without We've also knee got protection. knee protection where you can strap on to your leg and there's also pants which integrate the armor into it. Whether it's Kevlar or waterproof overpants or... So with knee protection, I actually have a question for you. Yep. Um, I was told once that knee protection that, that goes in your pants, like a separate yep. piece that you buy for jeans. If you first put that on and then put your pants on, it protects you better rather than having that thing strapped on it's over your pants? Because it can slide off. Is that Sorry, the case? Under is better, you saying? Under is better. I would say it's the same. Because mm -hmm. um, the jeans will take the abrasion the armor would take the impact. Right. Whereas if you have that on top, the strap could exactly like yeah. the Velcro could just yank, yank off, or it can just slide off. If you hook you... onto something on the strap, mm -hmm. it can easily pull that Velcro off. So, so you don't want to, and you don't know what you're going to be sliding into if you do. Right. Hopefully, you don't. So if you, well, you should definitely have one of these. Maybe not for your essentially motorcycle training course. You may not no, need this for more the training for parking course. lot, you don't need to worry about that. But right, but as soon as you get out there on the street, you should definitely think about getting your knee protection. Uh, your set of hands, where would where, where we see yeah. those? There's a new company now called Resurgence. I'll show you a picture here. Oh, yeah. And um, yeah, motorcycle. they come with hip and armor protection. Cool. In my opinion, it's not the, say, greatest protection. It's a bit stiff. Mm -hmm. The knee's not bad, but the hip is actually a solid piece. Oh, let's see, pull that off. Oh, I see. So there's not much flex to it. Is it's that bit, like a bit stiff? One one piece for one cheek. <laughs> one, <laughs> exactly one for each hip. Oh wow. Okay. So um, those that probably recommend replacing but these are the pants themselves they've got PKF technology which um, is supposed to be stronger than these aramid they which feel is soft like Kevlar. they feel soft but they, I can tell there's a lot to it they're exactly and they're very breathable I've tried these out myself mm -hmm. extremely breathable yeah um, fairly waterproof not too much like any gene it'll soak eventually right and um, yeah it stretches as well so it's very fitting and it's form fitting as well. That's cool. I got caught in the rain quite and a lot of times. It's nicely designed. Yeah. yeah. For something like this, which looks more. They have uh, protection here, right? Yeah, these ones yeah. come with the knee protection. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. These ones have pockets you can insert, remove, or. Right, those ones. Um, so, what about these? These are not as abrasive protection, you're saying? They are. These are Kevlar, but um, according to Resurgence's testing to a grinder, mm -hmm. these lasted 30 seconds, whereas Aramid lasted um, 3.4 seconds. I gotcha. So I guess my tip of the day would be just get any. You'll be still fine. Just get, get something, something yeah. right? <laughs> All right. Um, one more, two more things. Yep. Let's talk about boots, and then we can talk about gloves. This is the Alpine Star SMX Plus. Mm -hmm. Not they're exactly top of the line, but the one of the top uh, range. It's mm -hmm. actually the older one. If you yeah, want to we'll bring that one, and you could probably work the. Uh, 
So this one's got more rigid protection. Okay. You'll notice if I try to bend it, right. only the upper part will bend. It's got extreme solid um, ankle protection. Yep. So it's only the top, which you want some movement, which you'll notice the design in the flex so when you extend your foot to shift. Right, so what, what's what's the purpose of this? I, I know, I, I don't want to, I, I want a, a pro to tell me basically, if I wear, uh, just running shoes yeah. or these. What would what would be the difference in, in case a crash of an situation? accident? Yeah, shoes. If you ask ambulances, um, EMS, EMS or paramedics, yeah. they'll say shoes are the first thing that fly off somebody when they get in an accident. I agree. Yeah. Nobody knows why, <laughs> but that seems to be the case. So these are these boots specifically have almost like a they're like skiing boots, basically. Exactly. They have a little boot on the inside that you put your foot into. Wow. And then, yeah. It locks on top. Uh, mine are not exactly like that. You can probably see. I'm wearing them right now. They're different, yeah. They're, uh, this boots they're all a different. Bit more for racing. Mm -hmm. And the reason for the solid ankle protection is in case a car T-bones you. Yeah. It's that's taking the impact and not breaking your ankle. And even if you slide, I think that 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 you particular bone, it, yeah. it doesn't. It, you don't recover that bone. I think that's why it's important to protect this bone, in particular. And you, it's also removable, so in case. Um, another thing, just for. People starting off, everyone's always curious what these are. They're toe sliders. So the purpose of this is in case you lean the bike too low. Yep. There's sometimes at the beginning where you have your feet hanging off too I've far. I've done it. Yep. Um, it'll begin to scrape. And it would and not catch on the pavement. Would it? it wouldn't, right? In case if the other shoe, if you had a running shoe and you would catch yeah, the running shoe on the pavement. It'll ruin the leather as well. You could ruin it, but it, you could lose the shoe. Yeah. Or twist it's your leg, essentially. Exactly. So this is designed to create like a more of a slide where it's leather is designed to more slow you down with the friction. Right. And these are re replaceable, so in case you wear them out. Look at that. I have those. <laughs> They're replaceable, so you can always um, get them swapped out. Yeah. This is the SMX5, so you'll notice the difference in flex. So this mm -hmm. is more your street, this is more your race track use. Right. Um, the reason it has to be a bit more flexible is that it's got to be more comfortable to walk in. So this one will bend forwards and backwards a lot easier. Because mm -hmm. this is designed to race. This is designed to get off your bike. The SMX5 is actually extremely comfortable to walk in as well. Interesting. What, what would you say if it's summertime, it's really hot, what would be the lightest shoe you could still you know, be wearing on a bike? You'd probably... It depends what you plan to wear and how much you care about protection, but um, this is the SMX, sorry, the Alpine Stars Fast Lane. Mm -hmm. So it's almost like a shoe, but it's got oil resistant sole and it's got a little bit of a padding on the ankles and it's also got a bit of a toe slider. Right. Interesting. It has this little area you can shift, I yeah. guess. It's more an indentation than a yeah, it's protector, not really, but yeah. the other I thing noticed I don't a lot of shoes have like extra places. leather here. Yeah. So it doesn't for, yeah. so it doesn't wear in example. Yeah, like here that. we go. Yep. Makes sense. So you wear from shifting you'll wear this out before you get to the actual boot. Yep, exactly. And uh, the other thing to watch out for is boots with laces. Mm -hmm. I don't like them personally just because they can get hooked on to anything and also when you're shifting a lot. I've had m the few times I've worn shoes on my uh, bike have actually gone... You've obviously never done it. It was someone you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. Uh, very few That's times. Cool. And the times I do, I yeah. figure out why I don't usually do it. But um, you can get the shifter hooked on there, mm -hmm. and you come to put your shoe on the foot peg, and you, you either change gears, you get yeah. into neutral, and if you need to be in gear, it can get quite dangerous. So get so shoes without laces, something like this. or something that definitely tucks in with a cover or something and like that. Mostly. Yeah, and I, I, I got some like this where it's a side zipper. Oh, that's very cool. Slide your foot in, and then you just velcro it. Or sorry, zip it first, and then velcro it to lock. Yeah. And you got the protector for the shifter, you got your toe slider, you got your this looks really ankle cool, actually. support and your sorry, heel support and ankle support. I'd imagine this would be very comfortable to walk in. It is, and it's very breathable as well at the same time. Mm-hmm, cool. Alright, that's cool. Let's talk about gloves. I think that's the last thing we need to cover. Um, you can get some short gloves. We'll cover short gloves first. Alright. This is gonna be more breathable. Actually, let me get this next air. So this is more of a mesh, mm -hmm. breathable, nice for summer. It's got carbon fiber um, knuckle protection. 
on the palm, which is, I would say, more important than your knuckles. Out of all my crashes, I've never once landed on my knuckles, but I've taken quite a few spills on my palm. Yes. Or my head. <laughs> I guess it's the uh, natural reaction to sort of put exactly. your hand out yourself, like this, right? yeah. Um, so it's got nice, almost like a sticky material, gel-like. That's for oh, wow, these are the too soft. These are not even leather, just like very soft gloves. These are uh, synthetic, which mm -hmm. don't wear, actually wear out a lot quicker than leather. Mm -hmm. So you almost leather behind the palm. Mm -hmm. uh, sorry, the synthetic on the palm. It's got a little bit of a padding, not much. Yeah, so it's designed to be a lightweight glove. Exactly, More so breathable. it's very breathable and lightweight. I, I don't know, like I wouldn't want to, you know, spill out on with yeah. those gloves on. Definitely not. Especially at a high speed. But yeah, that's why they'll create something like this, which is a replica of their, almost one of their top of the line gloves, but the short version of it. So you got the adjustment here. You got palm protection there. Mm -hmm. um, same, like material. Right. You got vents within the uh, knuckle protection. Another very important thing, they've got the pinky attached to oh, your it's ring song, finger. it's song with the finger, so you, yeah. you, you don't break it. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Pinky's the weakest point, uh, weakest finger as well as it's, I don't know why, but it tends to uh, stare away from their hand. <laughs> yeah, well, I guess if you're racing, well, at least what I hear, well. oh, you, oh my gosh, you're so experienced. <laughs> Which is unfortunately, yeah, <laughs> unfortunately experienced. But everything made sense after the crash. So, uh, can you? I'm gonna ask you why I did something when I first started writing. When I started yeah. writing, right, I did a little bit of research, and I actually ended up buying a gondola glove first. Yeah. And, I would uh, recommend so just because the. Ang what is the difference? Like, okay. what, what is it covering? Why? So you notice where that ends? Just yep. Just at or just below my wrist bone. Yeah. So th those wrist bones are. Precious. <laughs> and for pivoting, if I fell, I could easily sprain my hand, mm -hmm. or sorry, my wrist. There it is. Where something like this, you got the adjustment here, the yep. adjustment over your jacket, and it's a lot, it's almost restricting my movement. Mm -hmm. A lot of people find that uncomfortable, but no time at a bike should you be putting your hands or flexing your hands to that extent. Yeah, That's I do find it right? a bit more comfortable in in, uh, in these type of gloves that I wear. Just because it's the wrist. Exactly. But a lot of times people have their wrist positioned in the wrong way. I agree. So that actually you're creating more pain. And also when you're riding, a lot of people put their force on their, they lock their arms. Oh yeah. So you put all the force to your wrist. And so we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna talk about different riding positions okay. on different bikes actually, which is a good, very good point. So it's a good segue. I think this is one of their top of the line gloves. You see the palm protection. It's actually got a solid piece. Oh yeah. So that's polycarbonate. A couple, couple of sliders here. Um, here. And also padding here, just in case you hit your um, thumb. Yeah. It's got nice protection on the palm as well. Double 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 layered. Exactly. Double layered. Yeah. We got a protective here as well on your oh, pinky to slide. Again, it's sawn with the. Uh, it's a little bit of more padding there. Mm -hmm. If you notice, push down here. You notice it's actually padded. Yeah. It's almost like a gel-like, so that's to absorb shock. Mm -hmm. So if they just had that piece, what would happen is if you crashed, this piece would dig right into your into your arm, essentially. Into your hand, right? Yeah. And on the here, they got similar as a short glove, the venting, the armor, and on each finger, they've got more uh, protection on almost every joint. And it just looks cool. And, <laughs> and the other thing is they covered, they've got actual padding to support your bone. I can actually put mine underneath the jacket as well as on top of it. Yeah. If the jacket is adjustable Typically at the wrist. Typically, um, most people ride with the gloves on top of the jacket just because putting it underneath sometimes will restrict your movement further. Yep. It also depends on the glove, I guess. Like gloves yeah. like this, it's pretty solid from here on. Yeah. Like so it's, it's a lot of bulk. To sneak it yeah. over. Definitely. Typically, like the armor we saw before, it's more chest and back, more solid pieces. Mm -hmm. There's no abrasion resistance because mostly you'll be falling on dirt, mud. And, and the speeds won't be as high. Exactly. Yeah. And mostly the armor is designed for rocks, trees, and more solid impacts. So that's why typically everything will be fairly light. I still don't agree with the, <laughs> <laughs> the glove choices that are offered. But, oh, gosh. Okay. Uh, so it's pretty much like a mesh. Yeah. Breathability is the key. These are jerseys you'll throw on top. Typically, some people wear them underneath, but typically on top to cover all the armor. And also pants with a little bit of armor. <laughs> Boots are completely different in the third bike world. Um, they'll be extremely rigid. 
designed for, again, like there's no twist, no give at all. Right. Until you really break them in. Because you use the feet a lot, obviously. They're always on the ground yeah, trying and to also stabilize the bike. Yeah, and also, if up hitting a tree or something, with the street boots, they'll bend in half, as when I was flexing the boots side to side. Mm -hmm. Whereas um, these ones, you can literally kick a tree and probably not even feel it. Oh, wow. Yeah. And the helmets are slightly different. Why, why, why do they always have this, like, cap on The peak is for peak. sunlight, mm -hmm. to block it from the sun. And um, the reason it's got a wider opening is for the goggles. Oh, I see. So they can, you can strap the goggles in and then... Well, you, you can tell I never actually had a dirt bike, so... Yeah, I haven't <laughs> had one personally on it. Yeah, but there's actually a stylistic choice of a helmet. Icon, at least I know, for fact, makes one. They're for street bikes, but they also have this little... A variant, peak. yeah. A variant. Gotcha. All right.